What's going on? Playboy Gaming here, back with another episode video. And today we're looking at the update for March 31st, as well as the brand new hero, Arya, Arya, however you want to pronounce it, when we're taking a look at whether or not we should pull for her. But starting off, we do have the new episode, uh, 4-5 Recluse's Forest, uh, dropping in on us. And that's actually pretty great because now we get a continuation of the story, Aiden's story. Uh, more than likely, we're going to be able to uh, farm for all of her missions uh, we do have Aria, as you see here. We'll take a look at her skills and stats in just a bit. She is a Mage Taurus, Ice Mage Taurus. Uh, her artifact actually looks kind of interesting. She is getting a brand new five-star artifact uh, and a new side story along with that we are also getting some guild mission improvements uh, and they're actually lowering the difficulty for the weekly missions and i think this is huge because our guild would never finish all of the missions and this is going to be great for those that maybe don't have enough players uh, or maybe don't have as many active players i think that's pretty good World Arena Resolution Season is also starting after the maintenance. Uh, Japan will be able to participate in this season's World Arena, which is pretty cool because I know they have some uh, pretty ca cracked gear on that server. Uh, we're also getting Ludwig with drop rate up. Do not pull on this banner. Do not pull on this banner unless Ludwig or Ludwig, like some people like to call him, unless he gets an insane amount of buffs, I, this is a 100% pass. Do not waste your bookmarks on this unit. Uh, time matter can be a strong artifact, uh, but I, I know some people use it only for like one-shotting hunts, uh, but we are getting Arya dropping on April 7th, so next week along with her artifact scroll of shadow so i am 100 percent pulling on that banner we got to pull for waifu uh, we are also getting mediator kawarik in the mystic shop rotation uh he is dropping on the seventh along with aria uh celestial mercedes is the four star along in that banner so i know a lot of people are going to be pulling for mediator kawarik he was or still is one of the uh, most used units in RTA, also one of the strongest units uh, that you can have for RTA. Uh, and it's one of those things where uh, if everybody has the most broken unit, then no one will, right? Everybody's gonna be choosing Mediator Quirk, my boy, hand guy in RTA, so that's gonna be, uh, it, it's gonna be pretty pretty nuts. Uh, we are also getting Spectre Tenebria and Solitaria of the Snow in the shop rotation. So if you do have coins, you're looking for Solitaria or Spectene, you can pick them up, along with Elena and Alencia in the RGB one. Uh, but other than that, that's pretty much it for the updates. I'm kind of excited for the new episode. Uh, we were delayed on that part, so now we're actually going to get a continuation of that, so that's actually pretty nice. Uh, they also mentioned that we are going to be getting the Ancient Inheritance equipment in the guild shop, so we're actually going to be able to purchase that, which I think is huge for those of us that weren't able to complete all of the floors. Now, of course, those of you that were able to complete all the floors, you got a bunch of other uh, rewards and chests and stuff, but at least everybody can buy the equipment, which is actually pretty good, especially for newer players. You can save up and buy these with guild crests, which is pretty huge, especially because it's a speed set. So it's going to make uh, at least a support uh, pretty, pretty solid for if anything PVE. But other than that, let's jump into Aria and let's take a quick look at her. So I was completely wrong, but I can see why, why the similarities, right? A lot of similarities to ML Luna. It could have been ML Luna, but yes, I know they released that a Sage Luna. So if she ever does come out, she'll probably look like that. Honestly, I'm not a fan of the Sage Luna look. Uh, I like the ML thought 
of Luna, ML Luna, or the thought of ML Luna. I just thought that she would look a little bit different. But we are talking about Arya, and she looks pretty great. I'm actually really excited to uh, to pull for her and, uh, and really test her out. Now, her kit is kind of interesting. Now, I'm not a huge fan of defense scaling units because defense gear or gear specifically uh, aimed at a unit that needs a lot of defense is very difficult to get unless you tunnel focus that type of gear. Uh, like ML Sermia, she needs very, very specific gear because she needs defense. She, she does more damage based on the amount of defense she has. So here she is, Mage Taurus. Uh, let's take a look at her stat line here. She has 115 base speed, uh, some pretty decent health. And uh, attack isn't insanely high. Defense, okay defense. So based on initial looks, it looks like you're probably going to build her some kind of bruiser, right? Some kind of bruiser. She has self-imprint defense and she gives front and back defense uh, percent. So uh, I don't know about the, uh, the self-imprint. I don't think it has that much value. Uh, especially because you're going to want her to deal some type of damage. So let's take a look at her skill two here. So skill number two, Guide of Darkness. Increases critical hit chance by 20%. And so this is her S2. Uh, as the caster's health decreases, crit damage increases up to a maximum of 50%. After using a skill when focus is full, consumes all focus to activate Dark Shadow Phantom. Dark Shadow Phantom attacks all enemies, dispelling two buffs, decreasing combat readiness by 30%. Damage don't increase proportional to the caster's defense. And so here's the thing, uh, she is going to scale off of defense. We really don't know multipliers yet, how much damage she's gonna do until uh, we actually get the multipliers. But let's take a look here and see what she does. So she does attack two units there on the counter, and then she activates the phantom. Uh, Removing two debuffs and decreasing combat readiness. So she didn't do insane amounts of damage there, right? Let's take a look at that one more time. So we'll talk about how she has a counter here in a bit. So she did like 3k, 3-ish k to, to a tankier unit, right? Charlotte's probably tanky. Uh, she did almost 2k to that, uh, that Sermia which is usually pretty tanky because of the defense. So I don't know. I don't, I don't no, she's going to do that much damage. Let's take a look at her skill three here. The Umbral Hour. This is a five turn cooldown, which I'm assuming you can get down to four turns with the Molas. Uh, using the power of shadows, increases defense of the caster and adopts a counter attacking stance for two turns. So she has a built in counter attack buff. Now, keep this. Keep in mind that any kind of buff granted to a unit can be stripped. And there are a lot of units right now that strip turn one uh, or that do or apply some kind of unbuffable turn one. So keep that in mind. Grant stealth and barrier to all allies except for the caster for two turns. So it pretty much applies an AOE stealth and barrier to everybody except herself for two turns. And then barrier strength increases proportional to her defense so the higher her defense is the bigger the barrier is going to be and so that's that's one of those things that again in my opinion i don't really like because it's so difficult to build units with a lot of defense so designer in a little bit we got lionheart sermia and then now we got aria that we got to build with defense and so if you take a look at her hp she's at 13k hp okay 13k hp so you're going to want to build her with as much defense as possible, crit and crit damage. Now, her S2 does give herself uh, that crit, but if you really want to go in or all in on her, you're going to have to max that out in order to be able to uh, push some stats into crit damage uh, and defense, maybe even potentially attack. Who knows? We don't know yet how she's going to scale, uh, but we got to see. As you can see here, everybody has stealth. So this one is kind of weird because they brought her in. So they brought her in with 
two stealth units, so two units that already have some kind of stealth, right? Which is which is a little weird. And then AoE. So they got the Para, which gives herself stealth. Spectane already has a built-in, can't be targeted. And then they got my boy Strays here, which they're applying the uh, the stealth, but uh, the counter attack buff is uh, what looks pretty nice. And so as you can see, they go with Para, they strip everybody, unbuffable, restrict, uh, and then I guess Arya went after after all of that somehow because she's not stripped, right? And then she goes, so she applies her S3, gives herself counter, uh, and then <laughs> and then that Sermia is going to pop off, right? I don't know how, well, I guess because stealth does reduce the amount of AoE damage you receive. So maybe that's going to help against the Lionheart Sermia, but I don't know. I think she's going to still deal insane amounts of damage. Uh, skill number one, Shadow Call attacks two enemies with shadows with a 40% chance to decrease hit chance for one turn. Damage dealt increases portion of the caster's defense. So her S1 attacks two enemies. Keep this in mind. She so she does have the potential, some something like Spectre Tenebria, to get like a free hit in on the counters. And so her attacking two enemies does work on a counter because again, she does have that counter buff on the S3. 40% uh, chance to decrease hit chance. I mean, I think it's great for what it is it's decreased hit chance i think if it were like defense break or maybe unbuffable that would probably be a bit more solid especially since she's like a mix she seems to be a mix between uh like support and dps to be targeted or if you want her to be targeted she is going to have to be really tanky in order for her not to get one shot right and here of course they're going up against a uh, fire unit but uh you know with Rimuru running around with violet running around lionheart sarmiel with the counters i don't know exactly how great she's going to be but we'll see scroll of the shadows uh this is a mage exclusive artifact uh maxed out if the caster attacks when it's not their turn Damage dealt increases by 16%. And after attacking, has a 50% chance to inflict a random debuff on the target for one turn. Decrease defense, speed, silence, or unable to be buffed. Now, this one is pretty interesting. If you do max it out, uh, it's an increased damage dealt by 16%, which seems kind of like a lot. Uh, and then has a 50% chance to inflict a random debuff. Uh, I could see this on like Archdemon... Mercedes, right? Archdemon Shadow. Maybe if you throw it on her, it is mage exclusive, so that definitely will work on her. Uh, but it's damage, right? So it's it's dealing more damage, but maybe for her it would probably be like fairy tale for her nightmare. It would probably be better. But Arya, let me know your thoughts. What are your first impressions? We were hoping for ML Luna, but it's not but we're still not as disappointed uh, as I thought we were going to be. Defense scaling, what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comment section below. Like always, if you haven't enjoyed the video, hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hey, think about subscribing. It really helps the channel grow and reach more people like you who like content like this. Like always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.